And you point out that uh, texts that are written within living memory that depend on eyewitnesses can be quite reliable historically. Of course, we know, as you mentioned, from modern technology that eyewitnesses have their problems as well. And eyewitness yes. memories are not completely accurate in general, but mm -hmm. but uh, Holocaust testimony, you know, we rely on that very heavily. And you mentioned this um, issue uh, of the 20th century, and in some ways it's a very good lead into my next question. Um, because I think when you talk about the synoptic gospels, many people can appreciate what you're describing. You know, they more or less give the same picture. They're more or less the earliest sources we have. Um, we ha they exist in a very large number of copies um, with a few with some discrepancies, of course. But you know, in general, they tell roughly the same story, even if there are some mm. some contradictions. Um, but as you've written, and not only you, um, John's gospel is different from the others and poses special problems. And um, just to maybe uh, explain my question, the last interview I did was with Adele Reinhardt, who has specialized a lot in uh, the gospel of John. And um, she looks at it from an explicitly Jewish perspective as who she is. and. Um, her ultimate conclusion after decades of looking at this text is that um, John is in fact an anti-Jewish document, which is a kind of traditional view that was held for a long time. Um, she holds that view in contrast to other scholars who would say, no, you have to understand it in the context, and, it's, and they have various explanations for why it's not an anti-Jewish document. Um, however, it, it has been used in the history of anti-Semitism, which is why I you know, associate it with, uh, associate this question with the Holocaust. Um, now, believe it or not, I took a brief look at your PhD dissertation, which is on John, mm. oh. and which, <laughs> which exists in microfilm in the National Library of Israel here. Um, many of your works are not here, but we do have on microfilm your 1991 PhD dissertation, which I should tell people is called The Function of Johannine Pneumatology in the Context of Late First Century Judaism. Um, and uh, now there are many interesting things in that, I'm sure, and I, I expect you've built on that um, since. But um, what I was most interested in for this purpose was your appendix where you talked about the use of the word eudaioi in the Gospel of John. And it's something that comes up over and over again in scholarship about John, because this word, which is usually translated as Jews, um, appears, I think, a lot more in John than in the other Gospels, and it also appears in a mostly negative uh, sense. You know, the people that are characterized as Jews are are characterized in general very negatively. Um, that's an oversimplification, perhaps, but uh, not to make this question go on quite as long as a dis dissertation. I'll leave it there. Now, in, in this appendix, you you gave a very interesting argument, which is that. John's use of eudaioi is ironic. And this is another um, solution, if you will, to the problem. It's not one of the common solutions, I think, there, that people put forward, but I was really intrigued by that. Um, I don't know if I can jog your memory and take you all the way back there or not, um, but basically my question is just, do you view John uh, in the same way as the other Gospels? Do you see it uh, all as similarly reliable um, when viewed against, let's say, the Jewish background of the time, the Greco-Roman culture of the time? Uh, and if so, how do you explain this either apparent or real anti-Jewish uh, dimension in the text? That is actually a cluster of questions. And so <laughs> yeah. if I forget any of the... Any of the pieces of the question, please feel free to remind me, jump in uh, sure. as, as needed. But yeah, I mentioned earlier how you test ancient biographies, because even though they tell what they believed happened, there's still a range in terms of how much flexibility that they take, uh, in terms of chronology, in terms of wording, include in terms of developing the nucleus of the wording and so on. And John appears to be on a different point in the spectrum, much more flexible than mm. say Mark. Now, part of, part of it though, if we didn't have Mark, um, 
and we didn't have Matthew and Luke based on Mark uh, in, in terms of the outline, we, we might not think differently, but well, there's still certain elements in John where we probably would think somewhat differently. So uh, what I've done in, in my forthcoming book, I do have a chapter on John because people noted that I left that out in my historical mm -hmm. Jesus of the Gospels. I've got, a, I think, a 1,600-page commentary on John. But when I came to historical Jesus research, I, I left that out. I said, this is going to be too controversial. Uh, and so in the book, I said that this is, you know, no point, choose your battles. <laughs> so, Can you uh, just give us the name of your forthcoming book? Uh, Christobiography. Okay. And I forget the subtitle because uh, between myself and the publisher, it's been renamed. Um, I think I talked about Christobiography, uh, Memories and Memoirs or something like that. And they... Uh, changed it to something that would probably sell better. But anyway, I uh, in, in the chapter on John, I go through where John is clearly in tension with the synoptics and seems, especially in the passion narrative, seems to be almost tweaking the familiar passion narrative. So for example, in, in, the, in Mark, um, Jesus says, whoever dips with me in the bowl is going to betray me. In John, Jesus gives the, the sop to, directly to Judas. Right. And in, in Mark, uh, they, the um, people who are taking Jesus to the execution, the execution squad, they, have, uh, they, they draft somebody to help carry the cross, probably because of Jesus scourging or whatever. In John, Jesus carries his own cross. Although that was the usual, you know, usually the condemned person would carry their own cross. And so, you know, if we didn't have Mark, we'd think, okay, John is probably probably the original version of that. And in a, a number of other points, uh, even, even apparently the date of Passover, so that in, in Mark, they have a Passover meal together, whereas in John, uh, I mean, he leaves it. He leaves a bit of ambiguity, but it looks like Jesus himself is crucified at the time the Passover lambs are being are being offered. You you have a whole series of these. Um, <clears throat> the the you know the Gethsemane, uh, the the cry on the cross becomes a cry of triumph. Um, in, in Mark, uh, why have you forsaken me? But in John, uh, the Father is always with me. So, I mean, there are ways to, to put these together. Um, since they normally had people carry their own cross, maybe Jesus started that way, couldn't finish. And that's, that's entirely possible. But John is tweaking the passion narrative in a way that's giving you a different kind of story. So he's uh, keeping you keeping people who are familiar with the passion narrative on the edge of their seats so to speak shalom i'm here to invite you to come with us on a journey of discovery into the jewish context and culture that will forever change the way you read and interpret the bible as you slowly go through our self-paced on-demand program in Jewish studies relevant for Christians, you will gain ability to discover the original meaning of the biblical texts. You will see the nuance hidden behind our best and faithful translations and to interpret these ancient texts in their original meaning. At Israel Bible Center, we provide you with the state-of-the-art, simple-to-use technology. This way, you can study on your own from the comfort of your own home, even towards your certificate in the Jewish context and culture. This study will strengthen your ministry as you continue to serve God. We will guide you through a large collection of crush courses by our fascinating faculty and roundtable talks with leading world scholars. Our weekly Israel Bible magazine 
as well as Israel Bible podcast that focuses on the land of Israel will assist us along the way. We believe that the Bible does not need to be rewritten, but it needs to be carefully reread. Click the link and register today to our wide variety of biblical courses.